Hello, hello. Oh my god. It's been like forever since I've done a live. Oh my god. Hello, hello, hello. Is anybody out there? Drop a comment down below. Let me know you're here. Let me know. Are you excited? We're going to do some painting today. So if you hang out with me all through the process of this pretty short little project here, I'm trying to get smarter there and pick some quicker projects for you guys and um, be here for you to pick my brain. And uh, I can share what's going on. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm in my new studio. I got it all set up. I'm finally feeling settled. Oh my God, so much work and preparation. But I'm, I'm here, guys. I'm here. I'm finally in my own studio. And I just had a birthday party class for a bunch of seven-year-olds. They were so great. Oh my God. Like, I was a little leery. Are they too young? But oh my God, they did great. They really did great. And uh, we had a lot of fun in here. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting some more uh, paint parties going on here live in the studio now. I wish you guys were all so close. Uh, much closer there um, than where most of you are. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Where are you from? Is anybody here live with me today? Uh, let me know. I'm not sure if my comments are working. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dorothy's here. Thank you, Dorothy. I see you now. Facebook's always changing things around. It was over on the other side of the screen there last time. I was on it. Like I said, it's been a while. Oh, my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just seeing if uh, we can get a few more people there to pop by and join us. And uh, we'll get started and uh, do... A little bit of fabric bags and uh, tell you all about all the wonderful things you can do on fabric. Hey Brenda! Hey Sharice! There you guys are popping all in. Hello, hello, hello! Nice to see the gang again. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've been doing a Facebook Live for you guys. I just feel like so bad not being around. But uh, like you said, it was earlier. I definitely am so excited to be in my new studio now. And uh, it's pretty much all set up finally for you guys that want everything all in one place. A lot of people love my website because it's got all the different pages now built on there for uh, my site members. Right? And then it's free to be a site member. You can go on, check it out. Hey, Cecilia! How's it going? Oh my god, I miss some of you girls. You guys all been busy. You guys getting, getting ready for your holidays. So I've got a great idea here for you today to make your own gift bags. There is a website on the PDF link that you can pop on. And when you get to that website, go up to the left-hand corner, you should see USA or Canada that you can choose. I'm not sure if anybody else is here around the world, but um, you can definitely contact them and see if this particular company will ship to you. But they are pretty, you can you can get them, I think, through Amazon as well. There's a bunch of different kinds. This one has a little bit more pleated on it. And then um, the ones there that I got as well have no pleats on them, but they're a little bit bigger and they're smooth. There's no strap down the middle, okay, guys? So you got to make sure that you're finding the ones that are nice and smooth with no extra material in it. And then that way you won't have to worry about, you know, it's like painting on jeans. You're going to have that seam to paint over. So... Nice flat surface is all you need for these fabric bags. They're great to go shopping with. They're great to put your gifts in there. It's the two-in-one. They can keep the bag and, and go shopping and stuff like that, too. And the wonderful thing about it is that we can still use our multi-surface paints, except for we are going to change to a different medium, guys. Okay, so um, if you want to practice on some paper, definitely use your floating medium still. Um, if you want to do a canvas or, you know, maybe a wood piece or something like that, then definitely use your floating medium. But if you're doing it on fabric, guys, the textile medium will make that paint really nice and soft and flexible, and you can scrunch it up, and you won't have to worry about it um, cracking on you, and it's washable, but you don't have to wash these bags. All right? And, um, yeah, if you have any, any questions through the process, guys, please uh, pop them into the comments. They're looking a little wilted now. <laughs> My poor little Gerber, Gerber daisies. <laughs> They're not looking too good right now, but I got some pictures, right? You guys saw the pictures where they were looking really nice. But yeah, the mums are looking pretty good, or the carnations. Um, and 
definitely uh, there's some sort of lily here, little tiny little leaves here, and greenery, and these are all like on one stem here. But the way they pop out, they only look like slider leaves really kind of popping out, little extras. <laughs> all the dry leaves are coming off. I'm like, please stay alive until I can show you guys my beautiful flower arrangement in front of my baby. Celebrating, you know, my first class that I got from here with all these kids. They were so much fun. Oh my god, they were so cute. They did so good. Oh my god, you guys. You know, don't feel bad about uh, your ability, okay? Pretend you're a six-year-old. and There's no fear anymore. Like, you know, when you were back then, remember? <laughs> you just jumped into anything, right? Jumped into the end of the pool. You just, you know, you did uh, things a little bit more freely and try not to overthink it. And I know I'm bad for that too. I try to, I tend to overthink things or overcomplicate things or always try to push the limits with it. But sometimes you have to just back up a little bit and just have some fun and do some fun and easy stuff, right? I know a lot of you, my guys, a bunch of new VIPs here. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you so much, Georgie, for letting me know that you can share it. Awesome. Um, yeah, I got some new VIPs now. I'm so excited for you guys to, uh, start sending me your practice. And know that you guys get a VIP discount now for live events. All right. So we're going to be doing this inspired by a real picture of these flowers when they're fresher. And um, yeah, you guys are going to actually uh, save 30%. I bumped up the, the percentage, guys. It was 20. I bumped it up to 30 for you now. And then every once in a while, I throw other different little special promotions. And uh, we do have my mistletoe plant. Okay, somebody was correct. <laughs> it was so funny. I'm like, this plant grows only up in the North Pole of Santa's Village. <laughs> right? And then they cut little pieces off of it and hang it over your doorway. So then if somebody walks through, you have to kiss that person, right? So yeah, they have to come from somewhere, right? <laughs> but yeah, doing some Google about the, the real mistletoe, it is a very invasive uh, species. It tends to take over and, and kill all the other trees. It lives off of other trees. And so it's supposed to be, it's not a very nice plant. So yeah, there's, there's, it's quite a funny story. If you want to Google more about the mistletoe and uh, the story behind it all. And, um, so it, like I said, I've seen some pictures and stuff like that. And I thought I would just throw it in a pot and plant, make a plant out of it. And it's very, very easy. A lot of daisy strokes here, guys. We're going to bump up your level on your daisy strokes because there's a little extra little twist that I do in here that, um, to, you know, bump up that daisy stroke just a little bit more. And then I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but I did add some of that treasure gold, the silver, like really cool. So it looks a lot nicer in person than it does sometimes in pictures. And then the ones that are new to the group are going, who is a VIP and how do I become one? <laughs> okay, one stroke is a lot of practice and I've got it down to uh, science of baby steps and slowly progressing into the stroke work and learning how to double load your brush with two, three, four colors all at the same time and really focus on each stroke one at a time with lots of little different projects and assignments to do to, to help you really understand how you can manipulate that and bump it up. And then after the five courses, there's a really fun wildflowers, which is really huge. There's so many more assignments to keep practicing those strokes that you learned in the five, first five. And then I've got the advancing courses now that I've put them all together in one big, huge ultimate package deal. So you can get all 12 courses if you guys want to jump on it. It's a really big, big, big package deal. You can get some of those courses individually. Though. They're usually $35 each. So um, definitely it's marked down to a nice bundle deal. And then there's loads and loads of hours of video. You can watch each part. It's all separated in one part. So it's, you can easily go back and find each part and uh, practice on that area. And then when you're ready, you can go on to the next area. You know, there's, like I said, some videos uh, from the courses got maybe two, three, four parts to them. So um, depending on which area it is. So it's all geared, like I said, all down in, into the science. And it's there for you guys to jump on and start practicing today. Okay. And then, like I said, once you do jump on that ultimate package deal, then you become a VIP and then you will save on all the future events that I have. And then I do the beginner boot camp a couple times a year. We just did an advanced boot camp that I am not doing again, guys. It's so awesome. And it's like so packed that I just couldn't do it again. I just like, I'm not a photocopier and even my verbs of what I said through those courses. Like, I mean, we had so much fun and we really bumped them up. And um, so we did put that on the site there for you guys that are ready to bump up to that next level. 
Uh, so you have to jump on the boot camp too. And again, it's priced down for you too as a package deal. It was a five day course there plus a two day assignment that uh, was also a bonus project that you guys could practice even more with. All right. So lots and lots of practice there that I've built on my site now. I built my site myself, guys. It's made in Canadian funds. So wherever you are, don't worry. It will change into your funds. Share this event. You can, uh, there's a little link down here at the bottom of your comments and you can share it with your friends and get more aboard. I guess I'm going to get all excited. And blah, 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 blah. But then if you guys hopefully know me when I get onto the projects, I'm nice and calm and I'm like, and if we're doing this, if we're doing that, and I get lost in my zone and we, you know, we have lots of fun in my projects. But when I'm doing my lives, hopefully you guys don't judge me on my bubble head that I am sometimes because these are a little bit nerve wracking sometimes too nervous knowing that you guys are all out there watching me and um, try to keep an eye on the comments. Yay, you caught me live. Yay. Yeah, we're going to do something really quick. I know I got to shut up and get my camera moved down so I can show you guys some stuff. And um, play around on this. So it doesn't have to be green, guys. If you can get them, they come in red, blue, black, white, uh, whatever colors you want. Different styles, like I said earlier. Um, you know, they do come in a couple different kinds. These ones do have a little bit more of a ridge in their pocket. So they have more of a bottom to them. Where these ones here are definitely just, you know, one big square. But they work. They're really nice. I actually like these ones better. And then um, what you guys are going to need is some sort of cardboard to make your surface a little bit more sturdy. All right, and we're going to pop that in there. Oops, knock over everything with the handles. And, um, and then because the cardboard is porous and it might stick to your fabric, I always suggest to put like maybe one of Donna's sleeves from one of her packages or any kind of plastic that you can find and just give it that little bit more of a plastic barrier. And you might have to stop through the process and pull it up uh, uh, away from your plastic, air it out, take a little blow dryer to it, make sure it's really good and dry. And depending on how big your plastic is, maybe you've got two of these little plastic sleeves. Um, maybe this will sit a longer, I want to do my design longer than wide. So yeah, definitely putting in some sort of extra support and then a couple pieces of plastic to put you in. All right, then that way we don't have to worry about moving it. All right. And then these little guys are really cool, guys. If you haven't seen them before, they're just off a of supply. You can get a box of 12 of them, and um, they're pretty durable, but they don't crease your fabric, which is really nice, because I have used these little clamps before, and um, they do sometimes will leave an impression in your fabric, depending on what you're painting on. But they are good and sturdy, and they will hold everything in place for you and stretch your fabric out. These don't stretch too much, so you don't have to worry about them too much. But definitely folding your handles out of the way, pulling everything down, and uh, popping a couple of these guys on. They're, like I said, they hold really nicely. And uh, pretty cheap, too. And then come around on your sides. There's 12 of them, so depending on if you're multitasking and you got a bunch of bags on the go, which I tend to do, I like to do a variety of them all at the same time, and then that way if I need to do any base coating, because I'm doing a white one today because it's going to be a little bit quicker. I don't have to worry about base coating so much. Um, if you guys seen in the other uh, project that I have, it was on a colored bag, and you can go watch that one. It'll remind you how I treat things a little bit differently if I'm doing it on a really strong color. Uh, then definitely I'll, it might need some base coating. But also fabric will suck up paint, guys. So not so much that you're doing base coating, you need to sometimes do two or three coats. So that base coat definitely will neutralize your color of your surface, right? And change it. If you're doing that strong blue or green and you're trying to get white in there, then definitely you're going to need to, uh, or lighter colors, you're going to definitely have to work it a little bit to get it to that background color that'll accept a color 
Like even with the silvers today, uh, we're going to play around with some treasure golds. Uh, it's called treasure gold, but it comes in different colors. If you guys haven't seen this before, it's an amazing, amazing line. There's a bunch of different colors that are around. Copper gold, antique gold, uh, your rose gold, uh, Maya gold, you know, your nice bright, bright silver, platinum, greens and purples and blues and just like there's so many really cool colors it comes in different sizes um and then um again also these color shifts and metallics are really nice too so often when i do something like that and i really want that brilliant brilliant coverage i will base coat it with regular colors first and then i'll pop my shimmers on after so then that way they really do stand out a lot brighter so sh color shifts work really nice uh the white flash is actually one of my favorites from the color flashes and then there's the metallic silver line uh silver sterling that i would use in the metallic line if you don't have any of these other ones so yeah a lot of the uh, the um shimmers are really really nice to pop up on this bag of the pictures, you might not have seen the gold that I used. I used the gold metallic back then because I didn't have it. I did do this a couple of years ago. And um, I did it more with the gold. I thought it would look really nice with the green background. Okay, so, you know, the old saying of Christmas, silver bells. <laughs> right, so if you wanted, we're going to do silver bells instead today. Um, if, definitely if you want to do the gold ones, then I did put it in the uh, supply list to use like a yellow ochre and white to start your background. And then for this particular one, I did use maybe a little bit of uh, berry wine to do some extra shading in. Or you can even use a uh, burnt ombre to do extra shading in as well. Okay. So it just depends on what color you want it to go to. If you want it to go to that gold side, then definitely use more of your yellow tones in white to get that base coat done. And then if you want to do more of the silver bells, then we're definitely going to play around with uh, white and black. And if you have medium gray, that makes it really great as well to um, be there for you already. But it's really easy to make a gray with your white and black. Right? And you have different tones of that going on. It's quite nice sometimes. Okay. So you guys that have your um, patterns printed out. All right, so I did give you, I'm half French, guys. I'm from Canada, if you don't know by now. <laughs> I am half Scottish. Okay, so the two worlds fight a lot. Um, but <laughs> uh, I did make some jo joie Noel. No, I don't speak fluent French. Um, but my dad does, and my aunt does, and stuff like that. So I wanted to make some bags for our French side of the family as well. And then also... Um, I put a happy holidays there for you, a fun font there uh, for you guys to transfer. You can pick which one you want to do it. But I thought I would share the original with you as well. You guys can see good? We've got enough lighting going on. Uh, the spells are not too, too difficult, but if you guys do need a little bit more help, I did do this in three colors for you to get the pattern on, okay, at different times. Definitely, if you want the little parts that I made, we're going to just put the part that's in black first, get that base coated really good and dry, and then you can pop this pattern back on to get your little details put on there. And then you guys saw hopefully the little quick video that I did to show you guys a quick holly leaf. And um, then again, if you need for the sizing and just to make your life easier, then you can follow along with the pattern as well or just freehand it, guys. Okay, so I'm going to show you today with the pattern. Okay, especially when you're working on white. Let me check my questions here. Cardboard and then press and seal it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just got to watch your wrinkles, guys, because I even used uh, packing tape on an old uh, pop case, like a cardboard. And then if I wasn't really, really smooth with coming around it, um, then there was a lot of bumps. 
<laughs> so now I just go ahead and grab one of those plastic things. They seem to work. There's still one ridge in there from the two overlapping, but it's not as bad as if you have a lot of wrinkles going on with your uh, tape or press the seal. So you just got to really make sure you're smooth. All right. We're going to put the pattern on a little bit higher. We definitely want our words to be somewhere down at the bottom here. All right. And we can even fold your pattern in half if you only want one word or cut your paper after. Right. So you just have a smaller piece. You can kind of see how big it is there. And then you know how much room you have to have on top. Okay, and then we'll pop down some uh, painter's tape. New piece out. Try to make it nice and straight. And usually I just tape down the one side so then I can pop my carbon paper or graphite paper. One is a little bit easier to erase, but I have to tell you guys, on this fabric, it isn't so easy to erase. All right? Paper is a different story. But fabric, you definitely have to be very careful. I have a tendency of leaning on my carbon with my bracelet, and it'll end up with all these marks. Or if you have your nails or whatever, rings or whatever, um, you lean on it too hard, you may dirty your white uh, bags, right? So... That's why I thought it would be good to do the white too, because it is a, a bit of a challenge trying to keep these guys really clean. And there's no way of painting white on top of it. You'll always see the correction. <laughs> All right. So definitely uh, it may be easier in some ways, but then white also has its challenges too. Okay, so you're going to be very, very light on your touch with this piece of carbon. And in fact, I even like older pieces. So if you have something that you've used a few times already, maybe it won't be so strong. Right? And then to give it a little bit more uh, of a marking, definitely the difference between pencils and pens makes a big, big difference as well. Right? So I'm going to use a pen so I can get that really good and strong. And all you have to really worry about, guys, is the uh, the bell. And then you can definitely free your hand the uh, leaves in there. And if you're going to make it anything, I would make it a little bit smaller than what you planned, then bigger. So that way you're covering all these lines. So just coming over. Tracing it out, and then this guy's hiding his tips back, okay? And then you can go ahead and put that in there, and then instead of trying to paint around your leaf and stuff like that, just wait, and you can always pop this pattern back on if you need it. Okay, so that's all we need for now. It just the general bear, bell shape. And then definitely pop in your words quickly. I want them to be a little bit below, so it's not distorted. I'm just going to open this back up again. I would cut it if you want it. I'm going to go with the Happy Holidays. And I usually just do it really, really quick, you know, just to get the general shape. Um, and then they're all spaced out evenly. And then when I start painting, sometimes they totally change. Like sometimes I'll make things a little bit fatter or uh, especially in the handwriting. Then my personality usually comes out with my handwriting and then they end up a little bit more changed. 
unless you're coloring them, coloring them right in, then you can get the exact pattern. But uh, sometimes I just freehand it with my liner brush. The fabric definitely um, is a little bit trickier because it's got to absorb. So how you doing guys? Are you all excited that I'm back doing a live again for you? You got any ideas of what I can do next? Pop them down. If I miss any there, I can always check out all the comments after I'm done. Um, but yeah, love to start planning the next idea. Try to come on live at least once a month. Do something for January. You guys down in the States are enjoying the warm weather. Down in the lower states. Some of the northern states are getting just as nasty a winter as I am. I'm right off of really the biggest lake there, Lake Huron now, and the winds just come crazy. Our snow flies sideways. So, uh, yeah, we can definitely maybe come up with a nice winter scene. Do I have everything here? Maybe. In my... All right. A little bit harder so I can see it. Okay, so we're all ready. And brushes, if you guys haven't seen my other ones before, Donna does have a couple series, and some of them, yes, I was bad, and I drowned my brushes a long time ago. Um, so sometimes I will use some older brushes for fabric, because I really want to get in there, and I want to wreck my brush, it doesn't matter. And then also, the Fabric Lion guys ones have the a little bit more two-tone bristles on them. Those ones are a lot more stiffer. And they will definitely be a lot easier for you to uh, get that paint in there. But definitely the signature set that she has, the uh, value set, um, not the signature set, the, the value set is nice, even thickness and uh, durability. <laughs> even when the paint falls off of them, they're still wonderful brushes. And uh, always keep your, your old brushes because there's a lot of pouncing and things that we do. And if you have brand new ones, you're going to wreck your brush. So... I definitely tend to uh, stay away from using my really good good chiseled brushes unless I really, really need them. So we might need it for the uh, leaf later, but for the base coating in this detail right now, we definitely don't need anything too fancy. And um, the old Pro set, if you guys still have them around, they're actually more comparable with the uh, flexibilities being more stiffer than the value set and definitely more flexible than the uh, new signature set that she has. I tend to, to feel like the, this set is more on the glass side, a little bit more softer, and uh, definitely wonderful for glass. Okay, so definitely when you're working on different surfaces, you do have to kind of consider your brushes a little bit more. But, you know, like I said, I love the value set. It seems to be my all-purpose one brush that I can do anything with so if you don't have a lot of brushes yet and you don't know which set to buy just stick with the value set guys because it really does um a wonderful series of brushes i 
Okay, so we're going to stick with the uh, medium gray for now. I don't want to go too, too, too dark. And then if we do want to pop in a little bit more shading, then we can definitely play a little bit more with black. Uh, or um, and the gray and make maybe a little bit more of a charcoal gray. All right, so we are going to need a fair amount of white and just upgrade a dirtier brush. Okay. And then what we're going to use in here too, you could probably use the paint with no medium at all and just start painting and it would probably be wonderful. But sometimes we just need that little bit more slip and glide and that's why we like to use these different liquids in the paints, right? And then because it's so nice and thick, it's better to have thick paint that you can water down than having a paint that's too runny and watery, right? And that's why we love the folk art, uh, especially the multi-surface, because I really do, I paint on anything, guys. And what the trick is about the multi-surface is, is the medium. So you, there is a whole line of paints that you can buy made for fabric, but... You know, you can use one paint and just change your liquid, right? So that's what we're going to do today is add the textile medium in there. Oops, it's been a while since it's been opened. <laughs> it's a little bit more rubbery. Look at this, the, how it dries on the bottle even. It's like got flexibility. So when that fabric's moving, it's actually going to uh, move. The paint's going to move with it, right? And if you looked at your floating medium, if there's anything at the top dried, it's like almost harder, right? So that that alone that kind of tells you how that uh, medium is just so different. Okay, so sometimes I'll pre uh, blend the paint to make things quicker. You know, you can use a, a little spatula. You got you know a good amount of painting you're doing. Definitely pre soften it. And um, there's really no science there to know, but it says one part paint and two parts medium. And sometimes I do play with a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on the coverage that I'm working on. And definitely thin layers dry uh, a lot faster and better than big, thick, goopy layers, right? So definitely pre-mix some of your paint with some medium. And then definitely, you know, there's times where I'll just keep moistening my brush and picking up paint as I go as well if I need it. Okay, so you don't really have to uh, do all of it, but definitely the white I would go ahead and pre-soften it down a little bit. Not too runny, right? You don't want to do that. You just want to have enough medium in there that you're going to get some color in there. And then if I want more medium, I can always dip into it. All right, so don't make this pile too runny yet, right? You can always add to it just enough to get it started. And then I'm going to come over and side load or pick up a little bit of gray. Okay, because it's going to be my detail liner brush now. Uh, that I'm going to do the coverage and I'm going to start adding shading and highlighting all at the same time. Right, and then we can find our pattern and uh, not base coat at all one color. Right, so I always like to base coat and add my shading all at the same time and you can follow the pattern really easy all around the edge and you can see where it starts to get skimpy so sometimes we have to actually really push that paint in there even add a little bit more medium in there if it's not blending for you okay so you can always adjust the liquid level but definitely try more paint as well don't uh, go too much medium because it'll definitely be too translucent for you okay so you're definitely no real rocket science to this except for you're just using that dark color a little bit on the top of your brush so you have a lot more white than you do gray okay and then we're going to come around the back side so first I'm just trying to focus on my line around the edge, right? I'm not worried about the white. I'm just worried about my line being really nice. Keep grabbing a little bit of fresh gray at a time so that you're not too globby. 
right? And then once we're all got it all lined, then we just take the corner of our brush, right? I just flopped right into that paint, picked it up. I didn't even blend it in. I just picked it up, right? So there's no, you no need to uh, blend it in. You can blend it right here on your bag, right? And then just keep spinning it around in a circle. You have a nice smooth gradient all around the outside. Okay. A little bit of medium just to smooth it, make it nice and powdery look. Okay, and then we can do the front one. Again, just concentrating on that gray. A little bit more medium, just on the corner of your gray. Let me slow down a little bit too. Sometimes I even catch myself going, oh, you're going too fast. Let that paint absorb. So if you go nice and slow, you're more accurate. And the paint will get in there better. Okay, so we're going to do the top side of the bell first. You know where that is. Okay, a little bit of white. Flip flop. Flip flop, flip flop. These, these, if you wanted to downsize my pattern, you know, they would look really cute. Um, because I keep practicing this, and then you should be able to do them even on a Christmas ball. And seeing all the beautiful ornaments being done by everybody. I, it's got a few done, but I didn't get as many done as I'd like to. And I just got one. I don't know if she's in our group. Miss Lori there just sent me my secret Santa. Sent me two of her beautiful balls she did. I don't think she's here today with us, but uh, she's another Canadian one-stroker out in Vancouver. We have a few of us here now. So I'm shipping Donna stuff across Canada, but anything you see um, that I use, definitely you can get through Donna. If you're down in the States, it'll be cheaper for you. Sometimes the shipping is more expensive than the product. So uh, definitely get it where it's cheaper for you. Um, I, I, like I said, I am starting to have most of the supplies here now. So if you guys are... In Canada, I can definitely get it for you. So you see how I just went and scooped that in a little bit sideways? All right, just start getting that color in there. And then I'm going to come down here, and I want to kind of save where I have my pattern on my bell. And I'm just going to fill in this little bottom area here just really nice and tightly. I need to get that side of the bell done. And then again, sideways. Okay, you sneak that in a little bit smaller when you change the size of your brush, right? So we just want to sneak that in there. Do a little bit of an C stroke in there. Let's follow that around. You can definitely use a smaller brush if you like, especially with this little ball here. If you want, okay, so I'm just using my big brush and pivoting it all the way around. Okay, so like I said, this is part of the uh, tricks and tips that you know you can get out of the one stroke world. It's like we're not doing a lot of um, covering and layering and adding, oh, you know, we're trying to get that all in there at the same time. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of shading on both sides. And then we can definitely add a little bit more black in there or charcoal gray to uh, define that little bell a little bit more. 
So again, I'm going to come around sideways, scoop up, lift my corner of my brush to flip it over, lift my corner of my brush. It doesn't have to be a total circle because maybe it's got a little bit more angle to it. Get some more paint. Put that around. Just pretty basic base coating there. And then definitely while this is drying, we can start doing some of our words and letters. Or you can take a blow dryer to it. I'm going to show you my cute little Bertha. <laughs> I just ordered a new little blow dryer to keep on my desk at the studio. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Is it too loud? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay. So again, if you really wanted to dry it good, right at the end you're going to lift it up and put your blow dryer down there okay but we can leave this like this for now all right because we just want it to be really good and dry on the surface so we can layer that silver on there <laughs> Isn't that cute? yes i've been ordering everything off of amazon lately uh <laughs> bertha okay it's a little mini blow dryer and it actually works good so if you're traveling it'll work perfect for art and also your hair uh, yeah, some really good little heat here, but you don't want it too too hot for your drying. Okay, so turn it down to low and uh, keep it away from your canvas a little bit. Keep moving it, and um, and then dry it really good, and then you can do another layer if you needed to. But I'm liking the coverage, pretty good coverage right now. Yeah, that dries pretty good too. I, I find that the paint with the floating, uh, the uh, textile medium actually dries faster than the fabric paints do. Okay, so the one thing about the um, lettering now, and especially black, black will bleed. So with fabrics, definitely you want to have a little bit thicker paint than thinner, thinner paint, right? And um, it's a real happy balance, guys. You gotta really try to be careful with your little coverage here. And then I actually like my number two brush a little bit too when I'm doing fabric. It's gonna give me that little bit more width to it, and I can press on it a little bit more than using our lining liner brush. Okay, so depending on what colors you guys want to do, um, it doesn't matter what colors you do. Definitely, it's going to be um a challenge to have that right amount of moisture okay so sometimes i have a dry brush not been used or in water at all i'll go over and i'll moisten it with the fabric medium and pick up just that little bit of paint at the time okay and then really only as needed guys okay so if you want to make your letters Okay, see how it's absorbing. You definitely have to do two coats sometimes. And just keep dabbing into that medium a little at a time. The little tube flat brush fits perfectly right in these block letters. So every time I go and pick up fresh paint, I just give my brush just a little bit of moisture first. You can do your letters in any color you want, guys. Okay. 
This is where my time comes now. <laughs> I gotta be fussy here, right? Just slow down. And you'll see that the paint will go really translucent on your canvas. So try not to go too thin because it may bleed. I'd rather let this dry and go over it again than try to keep adding too much moisture. And then your next layer will sit on top of the paint, not on the fabric. You could use a stencil too. Some people like to use stencils and uh, a sponge and you could definitely do if you can get the stencils with whatever your words and the size that you want it to be in which is wonderful to use stencils i do have a lot of stencils now that i'm collecting for the kids makes things a lot faster and easier um but um sometimes they're not the size that you want right you've got one that'll it's huge or it's maybe too small right so i like printing off my own uh patterns the size that i want uh, the Cricut is crazy right now, definitely. Everybody's using Cricuts and making their stencils that way, To You know, whatever works for you. Uh, but I print these off, and then I keep them in a folder, and then I use them again. The ink's not cheap either. And, uh... You don't have to be totally perfect. It can be a little bit different sizes. And then it looks like you're hand painted them too, right? That's supposed to be totally... Somebody photocopied it. You can make one P longer, higher, taller, fatter. I always had the stress of getting all the letters looking the same because my real name is Amanda and there was three A's in my name. So every time I was trying to get my name, it was like the fight of trying to get all three A's looking the same. <laughs> then you just give up and make them all look different. If they're going to be different, they may as well look really different. Okay, so we have that going on. How you guys doing there? You got all your shopping done? You got your tree up yet? Let me know. You guys still with us? <laughs> all right, so you can let that dry. Pick a different color. We can do that in green. You know, you can do whatever you want. All right, so I just wanted to kind of show you how I did that. And then when this is dry, I'll show you how I uh, outline it. And then I'm going to come in and add some of that silver in here now. And the nice thing about this silver, too, is that um, it does... Uh, what I like to do, too, with the silver is give it a good shake. And then sometimes we just use it by itself. Right? Then you can just use whatever you need out of the lid. Right. And then if you do need to multi-load, you can put uh, black with this or gray with this, whatever color you want. Right. And then we're just going to add that silver back and forth. And wherever it's dark already underneath, your shadows will all stay in there. Okay, so it's just adding that on pop of silver. You can add glitter. Uh, there is a fabric line of glitter that is uh, durable and washable as well. And as you can see, all your shading and shadows are all still there. We need a little bit of silver in the bottom. Just loosely plopping it on. And then we can always add a little bit more shading in places when this dries. 
and uh, your little extra decorations, stripes, dots, checkers, whatever you like. And just kind of getting that silver in there. This is so much more brighter than the uh, the metallics for sure. And sometimes I use my fingers just to dab that in there a little bit more. And then you can always blow dry this again if you want to put that pattern back on. Okay, but we're going to definitely put our leaves on next. I'm going to come on here and show you guys a couple holly leaves. Actually, we're going to turn this around and uh, so I can tip a little bit with white. And yeah, we play around with loading lots of different colors on our brush at the same time. I have a full program, guys. For you guys that are new in the group, definitely check out my full program. It's loaded. There's like a three hour video with each course and the ultimate. Package deal has 12 courses to bump you up a little at a time, right? A lot of people love my baby steps, All right? So we're going to figure out how long do I want to make this poinsettia leaf <laughs> or holly leaf, whatever you want to call it. Um, definitely, you know, we mix them in floral arrangements with a lot of different Christmas flowers, right? So... What Donna has often showed us is that train track style, right? So you're coming in a little bit smaller as you go up the leaf. Makes it a little bit more dainty and gives it a little bit more shape, okay? So what the thing is about doing this train track is sometimes it'll, it'll lead you uh, a little bit more too straight out. It might make your holly leaf a little bit too wide. Okay, so what you want to focus on in this train track is just meeting that, those peak areas, okay? So you're going to push down on your brush out to that point, right? Then you're going to come down to give it a little bit more of a shape of the leaf, right? And then you're moving up. So you're not moving out, you're moving up. Okay. And on this dry cardstock, sometimes we need a little tiny floating medium just touching the top of that bubble so I can pick up just the most smallest amount of moisture. Work that into my brush really good. And then I'm going to come over and tip with just that little bit of white. Right? Just to give a little bit extra brightness on the edge. So if our paper is dry, we need a little bit more help. And we have what's called a floating medium. And this is just the fluff in the uh, paint without any pigment. Okay, so sometimes we need just a little bit more liquid on one corner than the other. Okay, because the outside color is actually doing most of the work. Okay, so we definitely have to help it a little bit more. Okay, put a little bit of pressure and out to a point. We've always got to come back and freshen up our brush, reload it, straighten it out. Because sometimes it gets all wonky after doing all these strokes, right? It gets all crooked. And how can you get a nice little chisel when your brush is all crooked, right? So just coming over here and flattening it out and refocusing that color blend every time before you come over and do some strokes. Okay. So it's often easier to come with these leaves from the bottom and work your way up. So you're not touching the back. You've got to put a little bit more pressure up, up, and up. Okay, running out of paint, no problem. I can come over here, pick up a bit more on this dry paper, and look at it. All right, clearly I don't have enough paint. I like struggling in front of you guys because then it shows you how to get yourself out of trouble. 
Okay, and that's just it, guys. I just have more experience getting myself out of trouble than you do. <laughs> so I hope you go and check out all my courses and all my projects. I've got something for every skill level and no-brainer ones that are just fun. They come with patterns uh, to get you started on some of these uh, more difficult ones. You don't need to learn how to draw. You just need to... Uh, follow my step-by-step -step process and uh, how we put it all together and believe me with those finishing touches at the end you will definitely have it come together okay so that's one with the dark on the uh, inside I'm gonna touch dark to dark just below your leaf okay and then you're gonna drag that chisel all the way through to create a stem okay. Sometimes we need a can, just that little bit of moisture. Okay, and then pop really gentle up on that chisel. If you want to put some more little fine little veins in there, then you can pull them up right towards all those little points. And you just make them very nice and subtle. Right. Then we make them on dark on the outside too, right? So we want to flip our plate around to keep us focused, or me anyways. I don't know about you guys, but I always have to keep my plate in the same direction as I'm doing that stroke. Okay, so now we need a little bit more floating medium maybe on the dark side. Right. So again, if you need that little train track, put that in there to guide you. And then you're going to push up, and up, and up, and up. You can see my brush is loaded a lot better this time. Okay, my gradient's off, so I'm going to go over that again, just brighten that up. Okay, so sometimes if we don't have our gradients on, we may not get the look you're looking for. But doesn't mean you can't go over it twice. Then you have to pick a point, right? So we have two of them over there. Give that a little bit more pressure. Pull, pull, and pull. And a little bit wider you can. Okay. I try to soften that look in the middle there a little bit. If it looks a little bit off, always play with it. Smooth out those globs in the middle. Okay. And again, light to light. Right? So if you always have that in your mind where the base of your leaf, what color is it? And if you put that right to each other and pull, pull through, you'll have the dark follow along and you'll be able to see that through the middle of your little holly leaf. Okay. Then we can just use the back of our brush. Make some nice big dots. Okay. For our berries. We can make them all different sizes. Make them a little bit interesting. And then I grab my little liner brush. Well, it's not so little, little. The number two one is my favorite one. Yeah, I can do lots of little fun things with that. And then you can just pop in just that little highlight glow. Right? And then I'm going to show you how we do the bells next week on Tuesday, guys. So mark your calendars. All right? There's going to be a pattern I'm going to pop out for you guys so that you'll be able to get the shape of the bells on really nicely. And then we're going to freehand these leaves on there okay and i'm going to show you how to do it on these fabric bags okay they're really really fun they're really affordable there's a, a website on canada and in the states to ship them okay they're recyclable and they're almost like a paper material but they've got the fabric there you know what they're like and then uh, but they're beautiful to paint on guys and then we're going to be playing around with a little bit more of the textile medium instead of the floating medium and that will really make your paint nice and soft so it won't crack and then you can crumple these up and put them in the back seat and your paint will not 
be affected by it if you use this medium instead of the floating medium okay so there's a few different paints that we do you know play with there's a bunch of them folk art make but generally i always stick with the multi-surface then that way i can paint with anything and then the only thing you have to change is maybe the liquids that you're putting with it all right so happy painting guys i just wanted to come on and give you a quick 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 little demo on these leaves i hope that you're going to share your leaves in the group share your practice and uh, if you're a little shy you can always send them to me private messenger but i really hope that you're going to share all your practices in the group get this group growing and uh, show all these new members that we have aboard because i know a lot of them that uh, are coming aboard are coming from a different group than donna and uh, they may not know what this wonderful one stroke world is all about so we save a lot of time by multi-loading our brush and getting that effect done really quickly without having to layer and layer and layer like which is usually traditionally done. Okay, so whatever greens you have, you have thicket or sap. Okay, lime green, citrus green. Something nice and bright. And then depending on how big you want to make these guys, nice and big, again, maybe your three-quarter will be fine. I don't believe they have a 16 in there. Uh, but if you have a 16 regular green value set, one, that might work too. Nice size. Ah, let's go big. Okay, so again, dry brush. I've never used it. There's no water. I really try to stay out of the water as much as possible when I'm dealing with fabric. I'd rather moisten my brush with the medium. Just my personal preference. Okay. And then it's already in my brush. And then when I come over and do my traditional multi-loading, then I've got that moisture already in there. Okay. And then as I'm working... If I feel like my color is not getting into the fabric enough, then I'll keep coming over and adding a little bit more moisture. So we did two, three different um, all of these there. So I laid one right kind of over on top of the bell, the other one off over to the side, and then definitely one shooting up to the side. Okay, so we're going to start off with the top one. Okay, and again, I'm not even worried about tipping right now. Sometimes I'll add a little extra white. If you're doing it on a um, white bag, you're not going to see that little extra detail. But uh, if you're doing any of the other colors, then definitely you're going to maybe pop it up a little bit with some white. Or you could even alternate your leaves a little bit, put some with the dark on the outside. Some on the right, on the, uh, with the light on the outside. It just depends on how you feel about your background. Okay, so you definitely have to help it along a little bit more when we're doing fabric. Flip that around. Add another one. Up, up, and to a point. Okay, so I found a draggy, grabbing some of that floating medium in there, or the textile medium in there. And help that along. I like the when you do the up and the up and the up. You already got your little streaks in there. You don't even have to put those extra little veins in there if you don't want to, especially if you've got it happening with your colors. Find a point. Just try to add as much paint in there as possible without being too gloopy. And then it'll only accept so much and then uh, it'll just start getting gloopy. So if you need more covers than this, guys, then definitely wait for it to dry. It's going to come up to the other direction. Up. <laughs> and I never know where I'm going with these guys sometimes. They just kind of have their own little dance. Sometimes I want them 
really dramatically flip them over so they have a little bit more of a curl to them. Especially when you start doing it around something like a bell. You're like, oh, okay, I can maybe add a little bit more to that, right? You can come up just a little bit shy so you can get that extra little curl down. Again, flipping just the back part of my brush. Get that coverage. Smoothing it all out. And if you need a little extra fix with your gradient, you can always smooth over a little bit more. Okay, so I'm putting very little pressure and I'm trying to make these leaves as small as possible with this big huge brush. <laughs> right? So it's just very, very little, little pressure. It's actually easier to do it with a bigger brush than a smaller brush sometimes, guys, because sometimes we force that smaller brush to be bigger. Right? You don't have to work so hard. Grab that bigger brush. Don't be afraid of it. Okay. Especially on something like this. You can put two on one side, three on the other side. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how much space you have and how you want to curl it in there. And yeah, nice and smooth. So our berries will sit nice and smooth on there too. Okay, so if you do want to add just that little tip of white, especially here on the bells, we can show you how to add that little extra white. I just come over, pick up a little bead as I need it. When I run out, I just go pick up another little bead. Okay, flatten over your brush again. Come over and tip just the smallest amount of white. And then have a little bit extra pop. And when you're happy with your leaves, Okay, we we're going right through a dark area, so I want the green to follow through behind it, right? So that whatever's following behind will show up. So if you wanted it to be light, then you're going to float through the middle of your leaf with the dark. Okay, so I really want to accentuate the curl, right? So don't be too straight, right? The eye is going to follow that vein. And okay, so again, for that red to sit on really nice and bright, we're going to want to let that really good and dry. I think she said yellow ochre for gold bills. Yes, yes, sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, I just use gray and white for a silver bells. All right, try to show you guys a little variety. And then different color combinations too, right? See, the white silver bells do show up really nicely on the white. But again, it's bigger challenges on these white ones sometimes, right? Get the paint on there. <laughs> All right, use my little blow dryer. My birth left. Funny thing, that's something else I used to call Bertha. My big Bertha. <laughs> okay so another thing to do is just keep moving on go back and work on your letters some more while you're waiting for things to dry right so we do want to add a little bit more punch into the um bells or definitely if you want to add the pattern back on there you can put that those little lines with your liner brush you can do that freehand too if you want. But I wanted it to be just a tiny bit softer, guys. I didn't want it to be too, too harsh. So definitely mixing mostly gray. And then just a little bit of black to make like a bit of a charcoal. Okay, so it's a little softer. A little bit of white in there if you don't have gray. 
and then adding your textile medium. Okay, because when we're doing a bit of liner work, you definitely want it to be a little bit more moving. Okay, so that it slides, right? But we're working on fabric, guys, a little bit different. So that's why I chose fabric too for this, because we could have done a really easy card. Um, but I definitely wanted to go through some of the challenges, right? So you want the slip, you want just that amount of medium in there that's going to give you the flexibility in your paint, right? Softness, but also a little bit of flow. Right? If you're too translucent and feeling really watery here, you're definitely going to be watery on your bag. Okay, so I did the um, stripes. This here, so you guys can see too. Okay, so you're just going to come up under and do like a little bit of happy face. And once you're on paint on paint, it's so much more... Uh, foolproof for bleeding right as long as your paint is dry but wherever you touch that fabric bag then you got to be really really more careful okay so just basically two stripes kind of follow the shape of the, the bill a little bit Add the medium as needed. Mm -hmm. Then we had a bigger one down here. And sometimes I'll feather off at the edge, like try not to go right to your edge. And then we can sneak one a little bit lower here through the leaves. Maybe this one is hiding. That up a little bit higher. I'm trying to to stagger these two and try not to have my lines look like they're straight across. Right, a little bit lower than the other. And you can just use your your tip of your liner brush to make all these little dots. A couple under there. Peeking out, don't see that one. Oops, went a little heavy. Now this is where if you are a little bit heavy on top of paint, get a clean brush and you can erase really easy off of something that's been painted. Okay, but not off of your bag. You definitely can't do that so easy. And then I made my crosses. Sometimes I'll go over onto the one side. First. Then the top of that last one you did, put that, bring that over. Make your little X's. So the bottom of this one and bring it over to the top of that one. Bottom of this one and it disappears. First. A little bit of a, a nest shape to it. Not too, too straight, guys. Give it some, a little bit of a dance. So this one disappears. This one here is kind of Going there. <laughs> and just the illusion is fine there. Okay, and then we're going to come over with our flat brush again. And hopefully you have some clean medium. Mine's getting a little bit dirty there, so I'm going to find a spot to put some clean stuff. And I'm going to go with this little smaller brush this time, the 16. Dampen it with the, the, flex, the textile medium. Come over and tip some fresh 
paint, not the, the watered stuff down, some fresh paint, and come over and work that in over here so we can draw with it just along the line. So hopefully you guys can see. Most of my brush just has the clear liquid in it. Just using it as a little extra shading. So we're just going to pop in that little bit. Oh, I don't want it to be that black. Just going to add a little bit of gray to it. And I can add just that little bit of shading underneath your leaves too. Just a little bit. If it's too black, definitely add more white or gray. Okay. Now we have to make this bell look like it's in front. So we're going to add some shading behind. Hopefully your lines are dry. If we attempt this. Okay. And add much more liquid in there. So that it can be a little bit translucent. You don't want it to be too heavy. A little bit dirty. Okay, so this one just fades out behind it. <laughs> My lines were not dry. That's okay. I can fix that. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add more shading underneath the bell okay. and behind the little ball and definitely under the bell. Okay. Down the side. You don't have to shade the very, very back. But you can a little bit if you want. If it's not dark enough. But you don't want it to be as dark as the under the bell shading. You want this to be a little bit further down. Because you still see a nice brim of the shell of the uh, bell being silver. Just under. It's the shading where it's dark. No light has gotten up there. A little bit. Medium, push on it, put that paint right up at the edge. Just a little peaks here and there. Just over here, it's pretty dirty. Wipe up my brush, add more medium, make it more translucent. And so just that little bit of shading. And then, of course, we have to add the shading underneath our ball here. Detail a little tiny bit. Not too dark, guys, though. I'd definitely grab more gray if you need to go over it again. Fix anything. Definitely make sure it's dry. I'm going to go underneath around these leaves here too a little bit. Okay, make sure this is dry before you attempt that. So yeah, if you wanted to add a little bit of glitter, this is the Fantasy Glitter, the fabric creation line that we have for glitter. And you can definitely add pops of that in there if you want. Um, you can iron this too to set it, right? It's just like the fabric paint. If you want it to be more durable before you wash it for fabric, you have to iron your, uh, material, okay, with a piece of wax paper under your iron. So it's at a very low setting, right? Heat set it with a dry iron and, or with a pressing cloth. And then you can hand wash it cold after 72 hours, all right? That's for this glitter, okay? Paint is awesome. It lasts. But the glitter is a little bit more fussy. If you do wash it too hot of water, they might fall off more. 
and also they might if you're too too hot with your iron you might melt your little glitter beads there so it's just a very quick heat set but do not iron in these bags big disclaimer here okay i got it to the edit to the bottom down here you guys are seeing do not iron these bags they will melt it will melt <laughs> And everywhere the iron hit along the outside of the paint, it melted off. Okay, so do not iron these bags. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, just let them dry, they'll be fine. Nobody's going to be washing them. Right, unless they get really, really dirty, then you can probably hand wash them, let them dry. Um, but these are more like paper, they're recycled material, right? So definitely these bags are just a little bit different. Okay, so again, if you guys want to line your letters after, okay, take a little bit of this medium and thin it down a little bit so that you can get some lining done. But remember, now this is a little bit different. Okay, I'm squirreling my brush right out so I can get that nice thin point on my liner brush. Now you don't want it too too runny. You can go really slow. That's the trick of trying to add that just that little extra pop. Is just go slow. And let that paint absorb. Keep adding a little bit of paint at a time. Especially if you're on the bag part. I'm bordering along the paint and the bag, right? So if it's too wet, you will get bleeding. Okay. And then I'll do the holidays and then I'll post a picture for you guys to see the finished one after. And add the finished one into the PDF. So that you guys can print it all. Mm. That's fun to do just like the one side. You don't have to line the whole letter all the time. All right. Just do peaks of it. Oh, watch your gloves. Spin that brush on the way out. If it's not absorbing, then definitely a little bit more medium. Is that line really nice and thin? I'm changing them <laughs> on purpose because <laughs> I can. <laughs> All right. Have fun with it, guys. I hope that uh, you guys are going to share your spells, whether you paint it on fabric, whether you paint it on canvas, or just cardstock. You're just practicing. I'd love to see it all. <laughs> all right, better stop. And then we're going to use our daubers. If you guys have daubers, there's a bunch of different ones you have. Uh, you can do it freehand too, make little circles, depending on how big you want them, right? I can push this around and make it a little bit wider. Um, if you don't have the wooden handled ones, right? There's these ones here that are all wood, and these have a bigger sponge. I find that you don't get as much pressure around the out edges as a, if you get something like this or the Martha Stewart ones are quite nice as well. So we need a little bit of that red. And you can always put just that tiny little bit of shading in your dauber as well at the same time. We like to multi-load everything, right? So pick up a little bit of uh, berry wine and some apple red if you want them really nice and bright. Or some engine red. And then we're going to pick up paint. Right? On both sides of your dauber. Start working that in and just slight little squirrels. Just enough to get that worked in. 
and then you're just going to press down and swirl just very slightly. If they need in a second coat, definitely let things dry. Try not to be too globby. Making nice and fake berries here. That's an easy way to do it with these little fun daubers. Just going in there and really making sure that it's in there. I'm going to make one big one, a smaller one, a bigger. <laughs> and then pop them in the water when you're done with them, and then that way they won't get dried out on you. And then you can grab a little tiny bit of white. Okay, on your brush, we have some of this still mixed over here. Okay, water that down a little bit with the medium so that you get a nice slipper, slippable consistency. Okay, so you're getting a nice little slip. And then you're going to push down on your little berries with a little bit of pressure, just still using the tip, and then pop up right up on your chisel to give it like a little bit of a shine line. Get that little point on the end. They almost look like little commas. Push and then a little circle to the point. Nice little accent on them. And then again, you can always add a little bit more uh, shine on your ball. See that one? You didn't see it very good. I just need to add a little bit more gray to my brush. Fix that shading a little bit more. Right, and then my highlight will definitely sit a lot nicer on it. My little comma there. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of black and gray together. And I want to fix my little bowl a little bit more. Define it a little bit more. Not standing out enough. We had to, sometimes adding darker will make things look lighter. So usually our first instinct is, oh, my bowl is not standing out enough. We have to add some white to it and lighten that up. Right, so you can see that I was able to get a nice pop with my little ball sitting back on top again. And yeah, you could add just again that little tiny bit. Maybe you want a little, another little highlight move. You know, you can kind of maybe put something there. But definitely adding the darkness behind is going to um, give it the pop it needs. Right, and then you can put your name at the bottom or sign it however you like. What do you think, guys? Hopefully, I'm going to see you guys share your bags. Right? Like that? Quick and easy, something fun. And definitely, anybody would love to have one of these as a gift. All right, so I'm just grabbing that little pea of black and some of that textile medium and a little bit of that gray mixture again, right? It really will make a difference. All right, see the little extra shading we were doing? I should have brought that right across in front of the stem of the ball so that it looks like it's shadowed too okay so there's none on this side but we definitely have to add it all the way across here okay guys and then definitely finish off the rest of the lettering Okay, so for this script writing, all right, I am going to pull out my liner for this. I wanted to show you guys two different ways, depending on, you know, what I'm doing. 
Uh, you see, I got a little bit of dirty in there already, but oh well, what can you do? I could put a little bit of nail polish remover maybe on there, but then again, if that bleeds over onto the black, then that's going to bleed and make things even worse. So sometimes it's just better to leave it. All right, so with the script writing, I'm going to actually do the um, lime green. Add a little bit more of that in there, and I'm going to pre-mix it into this puddle here. Get this softened down. It's a little bit dry from sitting out for a couple hours as well, so definitely got to wake it up a little bit while I can. All right, and use the fabric medium to do that with it. Okay, squeegee it out. <laughs> and then test it on your your plate. You definitely always have to unload it a little bit and then just grabbing the very little bits on the tip of your brush and working it in a little at a time. Okay. And if I need more liquid then I can definitely do that. So with the script lining, you know, you can definitely take advantage of the thickness of your brush and push down on it to get that thicket thicker areas where you want it, definitely pull up on your chisel and get around those tight corners where you have to, you know, you're going to do a little bit of painting in there, you know, to be precise, you know, and get a feel of how much paint do you need on your brush to get that coverage where you want it, right? But definitely where you can, load up that brush really good and push down on it so you're loading it really good when you want it to come and get that thickness there for you. So you're going to pull right down on that brush and get the maximum thickness up on your chisel to get it to pull out for you. All right, so if you want to learn more about the um, liner brush, definitely my complete pro program I was telling you guys, I, I did specifically make one course, number three, all about the liner brush. And uh, I play around with some push flowers in there and liner roses and there's so many fun things you can do with this brush. And I really find that this course number three will help you loosen up and learn how to bounce on that brush and put pressure on it and then pop it up on the chisel when you need it. So always pulling towards you is easier than trying to Spin your brush around. Okay, so you're going to find areas where you can pull. Top of that little circle and then pull to close it. Alright, so just try to take your time and piece it together. Always pulling towards you. Okay, so we're in our L. Again, I'm going to do that nice thick area first. Pull it around the top. And pushing where I want want that thickness, pulling it around up on the chisel. Pulling a little bit more thickness, adding that into the eye. And then again the D. Right. Then if you need it a little bit thicker, then I'll go around it again and make it wider. All right, but really push down on that brush guy to get it nice and loaded. So that you're not just coloring it in. You're going to take advantage of that brush. Pull that around. I can hardly see my um, handwriting here. <laughs> Actually, it's very, very faint, which is kind of good in a way. So maybe you guys can't see where I'm painting on the lines, um, but hopefully you'll see on your pattern. Right, because you really only need, especially with a lighter color like the the lime. Right, you're gonna want to make sure that you 
Um, don't have it too, too dark because you may still see a trace of the line in there. But what I thought I would do to, to pop this out is um, line it a little bit with the darker green. Push down. <laughs> My handle's falling apart on me again. And again, it's easier for me to pull up and then add. Right. And you want a little bit more of a punch. You're going to start at the edge of your little squirrel and pull that in there. Okay, and our little comma. Make a little bit more of a ball on here. And then our S. And push. And pull. Just grabbing extra paint to get that coverage. It's soaked in there really good. Too blobby. And so again, it may not be a hundred percent the same as my pattern, but it looks like an S. Right? Okay. And then I don't have any lines to worry about coverage. Right? Over here on my H I actually do. But I could have put some darker color there too. Make that H a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. And we'll pull over a little bit of the green, a little bit at a time. We don't need a lot, a lot, so we don't have to do a lot. And you know, it gets thick and dries on you quick too, so you should only make a little bit at a time pre-mixed. Even the textile medium will get a little thick on your plate. So always put a little bit of fresh medium there. And then we can just be selective on where you want to darken that. So if you're writing this, what would be on top, right? This would be on top. So you can just add little highlights to one side. Right, maybe the top of things. Right, gliding it along just on top of that green will actually give you a little bit more easier time than trying to do it on the fabric. And just wisping it out, get a little bit in there, on top. Just stands out a little bit more. Really light on your touch. Okay, so if you're writing this again, this would be on top. Shadow on that side. And went on the outside of that one. He's a little bit more paint. Should have did that on the outside. Let's see if I can just dull this down a little bit. Okay. 
I like making mistakes in front of you guys, so then that way, if you do the same, then at least you have a little bit of knowledge on how I would do what to fix it. <laughs> okay, so there's my... i put that on the right side. Get that a little bit more there. Sometimes it's like, where do I put that? Okay. Pick all the left side and just slightly on the top. I don't know. Wherever you want. Just uh, here and there. Shadows are usually under. Right? A little one there. And then follow this one under. Again, it's easier. If you're right-handed, you're going to pull it easier to you. If you're left-handed, then you're going to pull everything the other way, right? So I can stop there, and then I can go under on this side. Come up behind your little ball there. And just feather that in on the other side. And then if you want to put your initials really tiny, guys, right? And so it doesn't mix up with your design. You always put your initials, make it nice and small. And then if you have one of those markers, identipens are really nice. They're great for the permanent markers, and they don't bleed, okay? They're the best ones to get for on top of fabric. We do a lot of pen designs as well. It has the really nice fine point. So you can always sign something at the bottom there as well. Or it has a thicker area. I had to pop this up for you guys. Come on now, right? It wouldn't be me. So if you guys have not jumped on any of my courses yet, guys, hopefully you will. And um, I'm always changing things up and adding extras and trying to change things, right? So hopefully you have an old brush kicking around the something that's all fuzzy, or maybe it's not a Donna Dewberry brush. Maybe it's an old yucky one there that you don't care about. Okay, so we're going to use that for the glitters and um, fantasy paint. Okay, so I didn't shake this very good, and sometimes when you haven't used it for a while, all the glitter will fall down to the bottom. So you definitely have to give these guys a really good shake. So if you wanted to add just a little pop, into your leaves maybe a little bit of this green dragon dragon skin it makes really nice and festive to pop in a little bit of that and if it's not getting glittery enough for you um definitely you can grab a, a little bit of loose glitter and um we're going to pour some of that right in there Right, so you do it while it's wet. Leave it a little bit thicker so it will look a little bit milky and white uh, when it's wet, but then it will dry clear. Okay, and this has got like big flecks in it and small flecks. If you haven't tried this fantasy glitter, it like I said, it is made for fabric. It's got that medium in there already. And so I think some people will put it on anything really. Okay? Glitter is good for anything. I'm sure you can pop up any design, but like I said, it is made for specifically for the fabric. And it won't come off with that. And it won't come off because it's made, the glitter's made in it. If we put extra glue glitter on, if you were going to wash it in the wash machine, definitely you might lose it. But if you're just using it as a fabric bag, as a uh, decorative, this is some glitter that I used to use. And body tattoos. Um, so it, I love the bottles. You can just sprinkle it in there. It's really nice fine glitter. You can get any glitter from the hobby stores and just pop it up just a little bit more. Right into the wet uh, paint. Uh, you could even just put on some more color, right? If you want a little bit more glitter on your red, then just sprinkle a little bit of fresh red paint 
just ever so lately on the areas that you want uh, the glitter on. Maybe you don't want to put the glitter on the whole berry. I like using just like translucent kind of glitter. It's, it looks like white, but it's not. It's like actually kind of like translucent. It just gives you a little bit of all the colors in there usually. And then you can always just sprinkle just a little bit of that onto your wet paint. And then just one little press into the damp paint. And then, of course, whatever is loose will come off. Right? So I just touch it a little bit, work it into that fantasy glitter. If you feel like it's not glittering enough, then you can definitely pop in a little bit more festive in there. I wouldn't put any here if you're using this beautiful paint here, treasure gold, you want that complement to each other. So definitely pick, be choosy where you put a little bit more of the uh, the glitters. Hey guys, so thanks so much for joining me today. And feel free to share the Mondana's group too. She loves seeing all of our classes. We worked hard to get to this level. I'm certifying elite now, guys. So definitely share off your practices over on the Donna group too. And if you guys are interested in that level one or skill builders, Okay, because that's the ultimate. Donna's program is the best. You know, I, I, as much as I tried real hard with mine, um, it's my own little twist on things. But Donna's is like the official one, right? So if you really guys want to jump on that skill builders with me, and then it can lead you right into the level one. You don't have to teach with this, guys. It's just to push yourself. You can just make better gifts for your friends and family with pushing yourself to that extreme where you're being really critiqued. Okay, so I'm helping you guys, pushing you guys along, but definitely I'm going to, you know, pop up on that critiquing and getting you up to that level, you know, to do your level one and and um, to get certified. All right, so I'm so, so excited that I can finally do this, guys. Okay, so private message me. I'll send you all the information for the skill builders and the level one. And uh, let's start the new year together, okay? We'll start getting real serious about our one-stroke practice. And uh, pop down your ideas, too, as well. And maybe in the next live I'm going to do, if you have an idea for me. Uh, <laughs> catch the viewer extra comments here at the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if I don't see you before the holidays, happy, happy, happy holidays.